Hello everybody and welcome to our humanism lesson and it's about humanism and the environment. So, um, <clears throat> Now people care about the environment for many reasons, some emotional and some practical and what they mean by that by emotional is for perhaps they uh, they might enjoy hiking so they might want to make sure that pathways are taken care of or perhaps people like animals and so so therefore um, they don't want to eat meat so there's an emotional reason behind it for more practical reasons for example if you want to go swimming in the sea or sit on the beach you might not throw plastic into the water or you might want to collect the rubbish and that's what they mean by practical now life on earth is both beautiful and valuable and many enjoy spending time in unsport places and humanists believe that people should do more to preserve habitats species and ways of life that are being destroyed by the over exploitation which means basically um, using it um, too much of natural resources and wilderness areas now the natural world is also source of materials um, food, fuel and many of our medicines. Uh, when they're talking about fuel, think about things that, for example, power um, cars. Uh, what kind of food do you consume? Um, now, <clears throat> such cycles, such as plants converting carbon dioxide and water into oxygen, are really vital for life on the planet. The, um, the tropical rainforests, for example, have been called the lungs of the planet, and it might be hard for the planet to manage without them. Why do you think that they've been called the lungs of the planet? Pause now and then come back. So why do you think, tell me? Yes, that's right, because trees take the carbon dioxide and they create the um, oxygen that we need to breathe. Now, the actions of human beings pose a, a great many dangers to the environment, including our impact on climate change and pollution and the abuse of natural resources. In allowing the destruction of the natural world, we may be damaging ourselves. Now, we don't always know what might be important or useful in the future. And so many people feel that we should preserve as much biodiversity as possible. Now what they mean by preserve is keeping something the way that it is, especially from being damaged or from uh, being destroyed. And biodiversity are just the types and the number of plants and animals that exist. Now um, <clears throat> it is difficult or impossible to protect or to reintroduce, that means bring back a species, once their habitat has been destroyed. And thousands of species become extinct every year. And so it is impossible to revive them. Um, extinct means no longer exist. So if you take a look at this picture, what kind of habitat is it and what is happening to it? What would happen to the creatures? What kind of impact would that have on the creatures living there? Pause the video and then come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So what kind of habitat is it? Yeah, you're right, it's a forest. Um, and when it's being destroyed in this way, what is that called? Shout it out. Good, yes, deforestation. Can you think of any animals that might be impacted by deforestation? Tell me. Yeah, absolutely. There are, uh, particularly in Asia, we've got the orangutan and the Sumatran tiger. There are many types of, of species of birds that no longer will have um, some place to live. Their habitat is being destroyed. Rhinos also, elephants. So it's a real travesty. Now, our planet is very, very small and it is becoming increasingly overcrowded. There are far too many people um, living on it. Now, the current population is 7.7 .7 billion and the United Nations estimates that by uh, 20, um, 2100, 
there will be over 11 billion people on this planet. Now, all of these people, all of these extra people will need to be fed, they will need water, they will need a roof over their head, some shelter, and they'll need fuel. Many of them will want far more than this, and that has huge consequences for our environment. So think about the amount of water that they might have to use to drink or to wash or to clean. In order to build these homes, these shelters, what will they use to build them? Where will they live? Think about fuel, so how will they keep warm? And how will they power things? For example, you know, their cars or even their devices. What, would the, what will we use? Or what will they use? <clears throat> Increasingly, human beings can control their own as well as other species fertility and evolution. And this places considerable responsibility on us. Now, fertility means the ability to produce young. So we will all be less well off if we use up these valuable natural resources such as forests or fossil fuels and the fish uh, in the oceans. Um, I just want to clarify what fossil fuels are in case you don't know. It's a uh, gas or coal or oil that were formed underground from a plant and a plants and animals remains millions of years ago. Um, so when we talk about humanists, they are concerned with human welfare and happiness and believe that this is the one and the only life and world that we have. So therefore, we must make the most of our lives, but we must also support others for living, um, to live fulfilling lives too, both those alive today as well as future generations. <coughs> Now, because humanists have no belief in a God or any supernatural force that will save us from our problems, they believe that human beings are solely responsible for solving our environmental problems. Now, we're the only ones capable of finding solutions that can lead to a sustainable existence. And I'm sure you've heard of the word sustainable before. And it basically means that you're not damaging or uh, you're causing a, a small amount of damage so that things can continue for a very long time. So when we're talking about a sustainable existence, we're talking about in this case, the planet that we live on and everything that we use so that we can continue using these resources for a really long time. Some religions believe that God created human beings and gave them stewardship over the world. Now, stewardship is um, the way a person takes care or manages something. Humanists, in contrast, believe that humans were not created but evolved naturally along with other species and will continue to, along with other creatures, um, live on our planet today. Oh, sorry, and will continue to, um, and will continue to, along with other creatures, um, live on our planet today. Now, evidence shows, shows us how much we have to depend on the natural world and on the continued existence of many other species. Empathy is also important when deciding how to act, and you all know what um, empathy means. It means um, to try and understand how something, um, how someone else feels. Now, many humanists believe that we should share and teach empathy to uh, future generations. So, people like you and uh, and very young children um, who will, who will also depend on our planet for survival. Some also think that we should think about how sentient animals feel. Now, sentient means that you're able to experience feelings. So um, to think about these animals who can't necessarily express themselves in the way that we do, but they have feelings too. And we should think about uh, the way that they're being treated. Um, many humanists also appreciate the happiness and inspiration that contact with animals and nature can bring. Um, and these are two humanists, Stephen Fry and uh, Ricky Gervais. Um, we know that Ricky Gervais particularly loves uh, all creatures, particularly dogs. Um, and it 
quite simply brings them pleasure, makes them happy, and that's an important component of life. Now, there's a famous scientist um, called Herman Bondi, and he was also the president, the former president of the British Humanist Association. And when he was asked uh, why he cared about conservation, now conservation means protecting animals and planets and natural areas from human activity, <clears throat> he said, it's because I want my grandchildren to be able to see elephants. So he cared about future generation. He cared about the people who would live on the planet in the future. Humanists believe that the importance and the responsibility of safeguarding the planet for future generations fall on our shoulders now so that these pleasures may continue. So we must act now in order to save uh, the planet and everything on it for future generations to enjoy. Um, UNESCO, which stands for the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, it's quite a long name and hence why they've abbreviated it to UNESCO. Now it's a special branch of the United Nations and what it does is it creates and promotes world peace through international cooperation um, in education and the sciences and culture. Now humanists were involved in setting up organisations such as UNESCO which has worldwide environmental responsibilities. So it's really important that every single country um, around the globe is aware of this. So your task today. Now we know that you're at home, but if you can, we'd like you to take the opportunity to discuss, to discuss this with your friends. You might want to um, call them online, discuss it online, shout over at your neighbours perhaps, or perhaps discuss it with a family member some of the questions below. Uh, then um, I'd like you to post two or maybe three of the questions that provoked the most um, discussion or one that you found the most interesting. So here are the questions. Um, does it matter if a species dies out and why? Number two, how much would you pre be prepared to give up to prevent damage to the environment? Number three, which would be worse if humans died out and other forms of um, life survived or if other life forms died out, but other life forms survived? Oh, that really should be um, if um, if other life forms died out. Oh, no, that actually makes sense. Sorry. Um, number four, is the natural world only valuable because of its use to human beings? Um, number five, should we be more concerned for the needs of people alive today or those in the future? Number six, do humanists give good reasons to, to take care of the environment? Do humanists believe human beings are more important than the rest of the natural world? And how do you know? Number eight, do religious or non-religious people have more reason to look after the world? Number nine, how are you deciding your answers to all of these questions? What principles and arguments influence your answers? And finally, how similar or different are humanist views from your own with regards to the environment? So I hope you enjoyed that today and I look forward to seeing your posts on um, humanism and the questions that you answered. Take good care. Bye.